Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling one of the most popular questions we've been asked, and that is all about cookware, pots and pans. What do I need to have in my kitchen to be able to execute dinner every day? So today I'm gonna share with you some essential pots and pans that you need, maybe some pots and pans that, you know, if you're taking cooking to the next level, you would want to include in your repertoire, um, and some uses for those. So to start off here, I think we should go to the cast iron skillet. Now the cast iron skillet is something that either your mom or your grandmother has been using for a really long time. And there's a reason why. Cast iron skillets are really fantastic in terms of heat retention. And also, if you do take care of your cast iron skillet, they tend to develop a really nice non-stick coating. It's not something that is a given with your cast iron skillet. It's something that you have to kind of nurture throughout time. And cast iron, you know, it can be a little tricky to take care of, but we've done a video on how to clean your cast iron skillet, how to fix it if it does start to rust, because that can be an issue with cast iron skillets. And it's really not that hard to do. You just need to be mindful and you need to kind of adhere to the maintenance but like I said before this skillet is really fantastic it retains heat it's really really solid and you should be able to do anything in here from baking to frying but it's all in the maintenance of the pan itself so the pan I have here in my hand is about a 10 maybe even a 12 inch skillet and this is a really good size to have on hand there are many different sizes of cast iron skillets, some smaller, which are really great for baking, and some that are bigger. So if you're doing big batches of cooking, whether that's frying or like a giant cornbread, you can find them in many different shapes and even sizes. So I encourage you to give one a try to start and then maybe you can grow your collection. Now, akin to this cast iron skillet, we have a cast iron grill pan. And if you don't have an outdoor barbecue or you live in an area that you're not really allowed to barbecue, an indoor grill pan is really great to have. So one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're purchasing a grill pan at your store is that the ridges or the grates sit high up on the pan. They're away from the bottom or the well of the pan. And the reason for this is you want to, when you're cooking on a grill pan, you wanna have as much airflow underneath the food. Otherwise, if it's too close to the food and the ridges are short or they're kind of flat and domed instead of straight up and thin, you won't get good grill marks and you'll get some steaming or searing, something similar to what you would have here in a cast iron skillet. And one added benefit to this specific model is that on the other side, it's actually a griddle. So you could do your pancakes, you could fry eggs, you could fry bacon. It's kind of a dual purpose device. Now again, you need to take care of this cast iron grill pan in the same sort of way where you have to clean it and season it every time you use it, which will help maintain that non-stick coating and will prevent the cast iron from rusting. Now, in front of this guy here, I have a piece of cookware that doesn't necessarily go on the stove top all the time, but it certainly can if you buy good quality, and that is a roasting pan. Now, a roasting pan, one thing that you really should look for in a roasting pan is something that's not so high and straight-sided. So if you're roasting your turkey or if you're roasting chickens or you know a pork roast or something like that, you want your roast to sit high up in the pan. You don't want it to be protected by the sides of the roasting pan, otherwise the bottom portion of your roast will not brown. It will be insipid, light in color. So really this sloped-sided roasting pan is ideal because it's not too deep. It's deep enough to collect any juices, but it's not going to inhibit the airflow and the heat around the roast, giving it a nice caramelized browning and color and crispness to it. Now, most roasting pans come with a roasting rack, so you should look for that. Look for something that's footed and fits the whole surface area of the bottom of the pan. This way you can roast different size meats. This pan could easily fit a 20 to 22 pound turkey in it. That's how nice and wide it is. And the fact that the rack fits in the bottom perfectly will help raise the entire bird up. Also look for a roasting pan that has nice wide handles to it that you can fit oven mitts in or towels because this is gonna be hot coming out of the oven and heavy. You wanna have a good grip and you wanna be able to get your hands through this. Now, as I said before, you could put this on the stove top, which is really, maybe important when you're making a gravy or a pan sauce or something like that. So look for a thick gauge 
stainless steel roasting pan. Now, in front of me here, I have some different pots and pans that you would use on an everyday basis. We have some pans that we love to use here in the test kitchens at Martha Stewart Living. These are straight-sided saute pans, and these are really fantastic for a lot of one-pot dishes or even shallow frying. So I like to purchase these in a number of sizes. This is kind of a standard 10-inch straight-sided skillet, which is really good for kind of one-pot dinners. But then we have this wide 14 inch which I really love for shallow frying chicken cutlets you can even fry chicken in here and also for pasta dishes now when you're making pastas especially when you're using a pound or more of pasta it's really great to have a wide shallow pan with a side to it so that you can toss your pasta with the sauce and it's not sitting on top of each other. So you're not agitating your pasta, breaking it up into pieces. There's very little movement. You're combining the sauce and the pasta. This is also a great pot for any shellfish as well. Again, you're not stacking the shellfish on top of each other, so it's cooking in a nice even layer. And these pots typically do come with lids, which is something important to note. Now, after that, we go into sauce pots or sauce pans. Now, this is a really great size sauce pot that we love to use for many different things, from soups to broths. This is kind of small batch items that you can do in this pot. It's really great for making curds and pastry creams, a decent amount of quantity. So this is like almost a four quart sauce pan and it's really great to have in addition to smaller pots and pans that you will use for smaller jobs. So great pots to have. Moving over here, we'll continue on with the pots. And these are stock pots and we have them in two different sizes. Now this giant stock pot here is something that we really like to use for pasta. So when you're making pasta, you should have at least 10 times the amount of water as pasta. And so this deep pot is really great for that. In addition to pasta, a stock pot is fantastic for stock. So whether you're making chicken stock, beef stock, any of those, these are really great pots to have. Again, because burners are usually limited in size, this kind of 12 inch diameter base here is perfect, but the heat kind of radiates up the sides and it will help simmer your stock for a very long time. This is a smaller version here and we use this a lot for braised dishes or stews. Anything on the stove top will really work. Again, same type of construction here with all of the pots and pans that we've been just talking about. You wanna make sure that you're getting a stainless version. It's really great to have stainless handles as well because if you wanted to put any of these into the oven, maybe not these stock pots, but maybe the straight-sided skillet or the saute pan here, you could easily go from stove top to oven without any issues or restrictions with different materials on the handles. Now, probably one of my favorite pots, and I use this pot all the time, this is an enameled cast iron Dutch oven. And a Dutch oven is really fantastic for so many different things, from stews to braises. You can actually bake bread in these because they go up to really high temperatures and retain their heat. So similar to the cast iron skillet we were talking about before, this is made of cast iron, but the real benefit here is that it has this wonderful enameled coating. And this is really fantastic because it lends a non-stick surface. And in addition to that, you don't have to care for it as much and season it as you would regular cast iron. Now, when you're buying a Dutch oven like this, look for a model that has a lid like this that has these wonderful rings. And you might say, is this just the design of the lid? It's actually not. What these rings do is they take all of the condensation that accumulates at the top of the pan and it encourages it to drip back down into your stew, into your braised dish, and it keeps the moisture kind of circulating within the pan, giving you a really moist and tender dish in the end. Now, another important detail to mention when buying one of these enameled cast iron pots or any Dutch oven is again, look for handles that you can fit your hand through both the top and the bottom because this is heavy and you're gonna be taking it out of the oven or off the stove top hot and make sure that the hardware on the sides and on the top are oven proof as well. Make sure there are no plastic or silicone tops that can't go up to a high temperature, otherwise you risk them melting in the oven or having an unpleasant smell in the end. Now, a lot of people in the United States love to use nonstick cookware, and I like to have one or two pots and pans in my kitchen that use nonstick or that have nonstick. 
And this is a new type of technology that's being used in nonstick cookware, and that is ceramic nonstick. So this coating is not Teflon like we've been used to in the past that have had a lot of negative associations with it. This ceramic nonstick cookware is really fantastic because it doesn't have as many harmful components in it, and it's much greener, I would guess I would say. But I like to have nonstick pans in my kitchen for when I'm making things like some egg dishes. I usually have them in smaller forms, like an eight inch or a 10 inch size skillet. They're really great for crepes if you don't have a crepe pan um, or other types of foods that tend to be sticky. Sometimes people are intimidated by making fish. Well, it's great to start off with a nonstick pan. Again, look for a pan that can go easily from the stove top to the oven, so make sure it's heat resistant all the way through from the core to the handle. Now, last but not least, if you're really serious about cooking and you want to challenge yourself a little bit, invest in a wok. Try looking for a wok that's made out of black steel, something that's really sturdy and heats up well. You don't want a wok that has too thick of a gauge to it. You want something that the heat radiates through very quickly because you want to be able to heat up a wok fast and you want it to kind of maintain that heat because that's really what you're doing. You're looking to stir fry in these woks so you want it to be hot from the base all the way up into the sides. But it is nice to have a nice wooden cool handle. So there you go guys, a cookware 101 for you. Now, as always, we love to hear from you. We love to hear your conundrums. We love to see your pictures. So hashtag us using the kitchen conundrums hashtag. We love to hear from you. And as always guys, click like and subscribe.